Hi, uh, fellow junk journalers. Uh, this is my second video about junk journaling, and this is my first completed junk journal. I am videoing this. This, what I'm doing right now is video videoing beginner's mistakes. I can share with people what not to do because I found a lot of videos about what to do but less videos about what mistakes to avoid and really that's what kept me from getting started in the first place was because I was afraid of making mistakes so I'm sharing the mistakes to help people feel more comfortable about getting started is my thought process on this anyways so this is my first junk journal I'm really happy with how it's turning out so far um, I did show the video the mistake where I did the edges incorrectly. That was my last video. And this is one of the things that someone had mentioned in the group I'm in, in Facebook, was to go ahead and get started and make a tester junk journal. So this is my tester junk journal. So all the processes that I want to try, I'm going to try in this first before I do it in the other junk journals that I want to make for... Um, my mother-in-law, my family, stuff like that as gifts. I have some ideas. Um, my Halloween keepsake f with all my kids over the years. They're adults and now the house now, but I'm going to make one with all of our Halloween stuff. And I wanted to make this tester uh, for mistakes first because this is, I don't care how this turns out, this is my experimental one. Anyway, so... I showed before I Mod Podge comic books, I put ribbon on to cover the edge where I cut it too short. And this is a spine. Now I followed some tutorials where it talked about using a template and I did use a template, but I think because my spine is curved, when I put the template on, it moved around a bit. And so even with my all my items are not straight. You or my signatures are not sewn in exactly perfectly straight, so I think if I used a flat spine, that would be better or taped the whole thing. I don't know, I don't know because when I was poking holes with the awl, perhaps if I used double sided tape so that the whole thing didn't move while you're poking the holes, so that might be my next try. This is, I don't know if you can see this tiny little loop. Um, I put that in first and I did not measure it. I poked it from the inside <laughs> to the outside rather than the outside to the inside. So when I poked it through, I didn't see that I had caught a face that I had wanted. So I covered that face of that warrior princess up. Oh well. You know, no biggie. Next time I'll know to poke from the outside in. There are little things like that that you don't notice. Uh, let's see. Let's get this back in frame. Okay, so let's go into the inside. I'm really happy with my signatures. I have three signatures that are pretty full. You can see it's pretty chunky. I did that on purpose because I used a lot of different types of papers and stuff to experiment with. And I just like it chunky. I'm going to do put a strap on eventually. And now, because I've already done the covers, I'm going to have to do the eyelet type closure, I think. And I'll do that later. I'm not worried about that right now. Uh, so let's get into the meat and potatoes of it, right? My signatures, oh, one thing about it is I'm really happy. I don't know if you can see here. See, I have three signatures. I'm really happy. I started from the back and worked forward. I'm really happy with the way that that signature came out. Then you go on to the next signature and it came out pretty good. This last signature, these are even and perfectly centered. I measured, I used a graph paper template each time. Uh, the, th the issue I had was I believe when I was sewing this signature on my template was upside down. I didn't mark it top to bottom. I had set it down, walked away, came back. And so at the bottom, these two signatures are very even. This one hangs out of the bottom of my book, which 
uh, that bugs me. That's going to have to get trimmed or something because that really does bug me. So, anywho, uh, let's get into some of the internal stuff. I'm really excited about how it's come out. I love it. It's kind of my Lethem Warrior, I don't know, whatever. It's everything about me that you know, I did. There's no, I'm not really into bird cages and roses. Um, so I, I did something a little different. I, and the, like, this is cardstock. This is craft paper. But then this is a really weird tissue paper. It's kind of fibrous that I really liked. Um, this is a print that I just glued onto the back or of onto some art paper and I haven't distressed any of it some of these I'll be distressing and whatnot I've just been experimenting these are tuck spots this is doily I purposely had the doily a little lower because I want to put something in this corner so that was planned before I sewed it in uh, craft paper more oh not craft paper uh, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the paper pads. This is a one. And a lot of these are single sided. So I did some printing on it. Which I'll show you later. But um, these paper packs. Some of them are double sided. And then this is a tech spot. That I started. Uh, this came up. So I'm going to have to re-glue that. More craft paper, double sided. Now this is my attempt at coffee paper dyeing. You know what? I don't care for it. I, I love how it looks in here. But what I don't like is how fragile the paper is. And there's uh, maybe I used the wrong kind of paper. I might try it. I love the look. So I might try doing it with a different type of paper. This is going to get stamped on the inside for journaling. And this is the center of my signature. And I didn't leave any strings on this one because my string broke. <laughs> so I thought, well, that's okay. You know, I want to try some with strings and some without. So that's that signature. This is, all again, part of the craft paper pads. This is traditional junk journaling in that I was having a bad day. I had a lot of chocolate that day. And I I made a my own my own if you can see that as a Hershey's wrapper a mini wrapper and it's a journaling card on the other side and I just punched it cut it with some scissors fancy scissors and punched it this is the M&M sack so I made a pocket out of my M&M bag sack these were minis that I had at work because I was having a bad day and then I printed this chocolate kind of French chocolate stamp on this page I printed it, cut it out, and glued it to this paper, and I'm going to add more trim and stuff to that on the back side of the single-sided craft paper. So I guess there's a place for I was really worried about having a picture on both sides of the papers, but I guess there's a purpose to having a single-sided and double-sided paper. So I guess what my point of that is don't worry about it when you're doing yours, when you're getting started. And this is just the back side of all that. This is just an image I really liked that I put down. I need to do more stuff around it. The other side of that tissue paper and the end of that signature. And this was a this craft paper had um, ledger on it. And so I folded it at the ledger before I sewed it in. So I, I don't know if you noticed, but it's uneven. This side, oh, and this has an L on it, which my last name starts with an L, so I liked that. But this is a fold out, so it's unevenly sewn in here, which is kind of an interesting, I liked the way that turned out, the opportunities it gives me for later. So when you're putting your signatures together, if you think about where your folds are now to give yourself opportunities later for, like, you know, if you didn't like that, you could cut it off. But if you stick it in there, then you have it to work with later. So just add some interesting folds like I did here to your pages ahead of time and then you can do something with it later. So okay that signature's done. So what oh, where's my next signature? Here it starts. Okay, so this is just a picture I liked on a piece of craft paper. 
And I meant for these to put be tuck spots, but really I put way too much glue. I think it's not going to work out. I don't know. I think they're going to be too delicate, so they may just I may add tuck spots over the top of that. This is Tim Holtz Distressing on the back of that craft paper, which I really enjoyed doing some of that. I tried the ink sprays and I didn't like them because I made such a mess, but I, this is the little pads, the distressed pads, and I really liked those and I'm going to get more of those. I also have some chopped ones for, um, I don't know who that brand's by, but um, this is just glued down. This is a black piece of craft paper with a picture glued on, which the glue is, I didn't put enough glue. I was really worried about what I'd want to be tech spots, so I just kind of tacked some of these things in. I'll add glue and stickers and different, you know, Aferia later, so I'm not too worried about how good these are, and I just wanted the ideas there as I sewed the signatures to know what I was doing with papers. This is a doily that I tried distressing with some gold, and it, the, I don't know, you can't really see the shimmer, um, but that's gold to kind of go with my Wonder Woman lasso theme, whatever, and um, some more just craft paper. This was interesting because I was trying to, with the craft paper being single-sided, I put it through my printer. And I printed an image that I liked that I got online that I have no copyrights to, so it's not like I'm going to sell this. I just took the picture offline and printed it on paper to experiment. Um, I did the same with these. They're just images I found online um, of this artist that I really like. Because I'm not selling this, I didn't have any problem with printing these things. If I were to sell one, I would not print them, obviously, pictures that don't belong to me. But this is for personal use. So this is a, um, printed on the back side. I ran the craft paper. I keep calling it craft paper. I do not know what's wrong with me. Um, I ran the the paper through the printer, and it came out pretty good. Kind of old and distressed looking. I guess the quality of your printer matters because this is my printer from home. This is the same process done with the printer at work. So, and it looks like photograph paper. This looks more distressed. Of course, the paper I used, this is just regular uh, printer paper. This 80 weight, I think, 90 weight they use. This is um, on the back side of the craft paper, so makes a difference. Let's see. Next, this is uh, an image I printed and glued on, and I'm going to add more stuff at the bottom. This is my coffee dyed paper again, and I burnt this one somehow, and I like the way it came out, but I don't know. This is a card I got at work. Um, I really love the picture of the card, but I, I'm not a fan of I'm going to gesso these or something. I don't know. This was a birthday card that they had given me, but I love that picture. So I wanted to include it, and I'll get rid of the rest. So I'm from California, but I no longer live there. Um, I was looking at a picture of uh, some things like the coastline and stuff. And I found that, and it just kind of reminded me of home. It had some pretty base points. And the picture, I don't know if you can see it, but the picture is kind of comical. <clears throat> and I liked it, so I stuck it in here, and I don't know what I'm going to do with it. But it's kind of got this woman here that goes along with my theme, which is, I'm almost feeling like this turned out to be an inner goddess thing. Back page, uh which I hate because, yeah. Anyways, so <laughs> I hate that saying, but uh, that's kind of what this has turned into is powerful women and just interesting images to remind myself to be strong and things like that, I guess is the purpose of this junk journal and, of course, experimenting, but that's what this is going to kind of turn into is dreaming um, my, my favorite things about strong women and stuff like that is what... I'm going to be putting filling this with because why not anyways 
So this, again, is um, the other end of that craft paper where I... It's a black paper. I left the inner blank on purpose so that I can do something with some uh, interesting chalk pins and stuff like that. This side is written, good times, so very endearing, so many good times, yada yada yada. <clears throat> then it's kind of the, this is a silvery white and then this is a black and white shiny photo on top of it that I cut out and glued on. A watercolor Wonder Woman. I have one of those earlier you probably saw on the back and it's stuck on on the back of this craft paper. Excuse me for yawning. It's very very early and I have not had coffee. It's spring but I wanted to get this video for you guys. I finished this last night and I wanted to get this video out this morning so you could see it before I get on with my day. The other side of the distressed paper this I did some uh, chalk ink on, and I really love how this came out. It's pretty. It's gonna. It's gonna be a fun page to work on. So that's my second signature. My third signature. Short piece of paper. It's not centered on purpose. And when I clipped everything down, I actually washied. When I went to sew my signature, I washied these short pieces of paper to the bigger piece of paper. Okay, flat. <clears throat> and then I used the big black echo fasteners on both sides as I sewed and that kept everything in place as you were sewing. So here's some more craft paper. This is um, a, like a journaling corner or smaller piece of a big uh, craft paper that's all lined up for you to cut. This, I really like how this turned out. This is, it, there's so many, on Pinterest there's so many uh, jointed doll uh, paper dolls that you can print and what I did was I only glued down it's just very three-dimensional I only glued down um, the corners of her the base and then everything else is tucked in and loose so she's kind of as the paper bends she really well she did more yesterday I guess she's gonna flatten out as the weight of the book holds her down but I really like that she moves and she's fluid Anyways, so and get a closer look at that. I really enjoy the way that looks. So I might do some like I again. This is about experimenting, right? This is on a piece of um, there was a stash of paper they were getting rid of at work. This blue marble paper used from 1970. I don't know. Uh, again, this beige paper came from the same. They, they just had a stash of paper they were getting rid of, so I claimed some of it. Somebody else claimed some for her granddaughter, and I was like, I want paper too. So, um, anyways, another foldy card. I did not washi this in because I didn't care where it ended up height-wise when I sewed. Something shifted, though. I, I don't understand what happened there. I don't know if you can see how these two pages don't line up. Something shifted while I was sewing, even though I had the clip on, and that's disconcerting. Maybe I have too many pages. I have 10 on most of them. This one, I think, has 11 because I added a page at the last minute. So 10, 10, 11. Maybe 11 is one too many because these pages did shift while I was sewing. But that's okay. I'm going to work with it. This page was the cover of the book that I used. Um, I put it in because I really like the way this paper feels. It almost feels like plastic or vinyl. And I want to do something with gesso and cover that up and maybe make some pockets. This was a great opportunity to have. It's not a very good fold because um, it's just not. It, I've tried using my bone tool. It just won't stay folded. So I may have to glue it down or sew it or something. But I, um, I like the texture of the paper and I want to do something creative with the, maybe making a pocket or maybe just leaving it like this so that I have, I don't know, we'll see. But it's there so that I have the opportunity to do something with it later. More coffee paper. Again, did not enjoy working with the coffee paper, but I love how it looks. Maybe I'll just buy coffee paper from now on. I don't know, but I did get the burn marks, which are kind of cool. 
um, did not set fire to my oven while it was happening, but you know, almost, <laughs> apparently. Uh, more craft paper, single-sided. This is craft paper that was single-sided that I put the images on and I mudge podged it like it, when I did the cover and it came out almost like it, it's almost like plastic it's interesting texture it'll be interesting to work with I did leave strings on this signature but this thread is very cottony and very soft and I'm I don't think the beads are gonna stay on it so I'm, I, I may end up trimming it all I don't know. We'll see. Paper, the other side is so you can see really good there how burnt that came out. I, I don't know what I did. This is the other side of that book cover. Uh, more paper, more paper. The other side of that card, it's folding that way. The other card from the previous signature folded out this way. This one folded out that way. I really like the evenness so that it's not the same on both sides. So you have something unexpected. I guess my point to that is don't be afraid to experiment. It doesn't have to be perfectly like this page is that page equally. I mean, I feel like you can have some things uneven. And the last card. Oh, and this is just adorable A little they're like little pom-poms. I don't know. I, I just, I had to have them in here. Um, my, this circle is going to have a tassel that I'm going to make with a bunch of different red, white, and blue ribbon-y things. It's going to be, it's going to match the Wonder Woman theme. So this is it. This is my first attempt at junk journaling. I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out so far. I'm going to keep working on it, and oh, now see that's coming loose. Uh, it might be the gel I use, or the glue I'm using. I've hot glued some of these, and I've read that um, I've gotten some of Lean's glue, the tacky glue, and I'm going to, yeah, see that's coming up. It's only been on there a week. So uh, I'm going to be using a Lean's uh, tacky glue because a lot of the tutorials said that's a much stronger thing, and I'm going to replace some of this hot glued stuff with that. And, Put it on the ends of these so they don't get frayed and yeah so this is my first junk journal it's just getting started and look how chunky it is um i'm gonna have to do i think i'll be doing a closure where i have the little knob that stands up so i'm gonna punch a hole in the back and do a really long ribbon that i just can go around and around the knob because i want this to be able to grow as much as it wants and if I have a long ribbon then if it's like this and I have the ribbon on it it'll be fine and it won't matter okay well thank you for watching my video I hope that I have answered some questions for some newbies by making the mistakes for you and again watch mark your template upside down so that you don't get the hanger outer that's my biggest mistake for this video I guess and uh, Watch both sides when you're punching your holes. Make sure you don't punch a hole in somebody's face. Uh, the rest of it is pretty much anything can be fixed. Like I, I experimented with some different um, papers that didn't end up in here because it just weren't my favorite. I also had some ones I liked that I took out because it was too thick and uh, really not everything has to go in here. So I took out ones that I wasn't as excited about working with. <clears throat> okay, well, happy junk journaling and have a great day.